Let's talk to our guest. Uh, our first guest is seated, a lawyer, Philemon La. He's representing the NDC. Uh, we know that uh, Honorable Ebeneza Nate will join us very soon, and he represents uh, the NPP. Philemon, good morning. Good morning, Rosalind. How are you? Very well, very well, by God's grace. You look good. You look better. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. This yeah. actually was put together by the National Theatre. Wow, so, so you look very, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Nice, yeah. they, are, they actually do it so well, I get surprised. I'm like, National Theatre, mm. hey, mm. kudos to you, Aze. Kudos to you. You guys always make us look fantabulous. Anyway, let's start. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, the All-African Games yes, and then we we'll yes, delve yes. into the other conversation. Um, it's quite surprising that almost all the newspapers are reporting the highlight, the, the highs, but we are not reporting the lows. When are we going to start holding is, is it the uh, case, people responsible? Is it the case that, uh, that some aspect of the press is rented? Because as you are reading us, noting the particular newspapers that are highlighting the said glory, of uh, the All Africa Games. I'm also mm. noticing the kind of newspapers that are reporting the John Kuma story. And it tells me that all these newspapers seem to be skewed towards a particular direction. And I think that it's important that the media is able to highlight the essentials. Today, you are talking about an interview with the widow of John Kuma, who is alleged to have said that he didn't die out of poison. When was she interviewed? Fresh widow, five days old, even less than five days since John Kuma died. Which media outlet went to interview this woman in her morning state for her to say her husband did not die out of poison? Which newspaper? Where's the evidence of it? Well, so maybe it's important they, did, that, they did interview No, them. she hasn't. I'm, I'm told that even some media house in Accra is uh, a prominent media house tilted to the MPB is going to interview this woman. I'm thinking, how, can, how insensitive can we be? The woman has lost her husband. It's been less than when? Three days, four days. You are putting her on prime time national TV. I think he died on Thursday. To ask her what killed her husband? How insensitive can we be? Maybe and why is the MPP so uh, Maybe fixated was, with the idea of trying to wash themselves off liability? Why is the MPP so. Why? 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 But they are the same people why? that granted interview and said he was. No, but you see. His special aide said it. Yes. And then there's a gentleman who was at Wound to An Me. An aide of Wound to Me yes. has also come out to say he that he was poisoned. It. But the wife says he wasn't poisoned. Well, the wife, that, that's what I'm challenging. That we have seen the, the interview of John Kumar's aide. We saw the interview. We've seen the interview of Wound to Me's aide. And we've heard what they said. But for rented press who come out and make claims they cannot substantiate to say that we do, has said he didn't. I mean, we can't believe that. Okay. I think it's an important matter that we need to look at. Because will happen. Exactly. It should happen. It should happen. happen. I hope that it's done through a transparent process where... Uh, where because it's I, I, the, the, the situation where young people are just killed. This is not the first time somebody has died in the MPP in this manner. Not, not the just first the MPP. time. People are dying. Not the first people time. People are being poisoned and we have to be very careful. Not the careful. first time. I don't think it's just the MPP. I think it's becoming a norm and we need to try and get it out of the system. I agree. Because um, I think somewhere last year, a young man came to Ghana to celebrate his birthday. We heard you know, as that. he was celebrating with his friends, somebody poisoned him and he died. That life is as important as John yes. Kuma's life. Yes. But in this particular scenario, we have heard leading members of the MPP say that John Kuma was poisoned because of a certain... A political ambition and I think that needs to be investigated. Everyone who sought to benefit from the said position John Kuma was being earmarked for must be investigated. I've heard elements of the MPP say that the same ilk of people that are in contention to be vice president are those responsible for the death of John Kuma and I think they have, it has to be investigated. Okay. It is not enough for the police to arrest a media man or people that are tangential to the issue. Arrest those that are in the, in the, in the, directly involved in all of this. All right, Philemon. The point is let's, let's talk about the all African unlike the MPP, challenges. Unlike the MPP's uh, selection of a vice president, that has been characterized as so much uh, rancor and ours has been transparent. We've uh, selected the good old professor, Professor Jane Nano Pokwa Jamai. And I've heard people say, let me just uh, say something about this. I've heard people say that uh, her constituency is central region and central region is a swing uh, region and all of that. As much as Central Region is a constituency of the Guldo Prof, let's remember that you are her constituent. The women of Ghana are the constituents of the professor, and the women of Ghana are there in their millions, and they will be represented for the first time ever in the history of our politics, so of our buy, governance. You're trying to buy us. No, I mean, the fact <laughs> of the matter is that we need a woman on the presidential <laughs> ticket, and the NDC is providing that platform for females to lead at the very top. 
we, never, we never, need, we need never. credible people. In the so politics, if she's credible, no, but I, mean, I, I don't think Rosalind, it should be about sex. I think it should be Rosalind, about who is credible. Rosalind, so if she's credible, why not? No doubt about that. And and of course, but you know, so far, the NDC no have told us so that far, she's very credible. So far, so that's no one it. has been able to impugn the integrity, the middle, the width, the strength, her sharp intellect of Professor Jenna No one. I know her personally. Wow, what's sizzling in? Look, you see the kind of you know, when when soup is boiling, you see the vapor coming up. That's the extent of her intellect. I know her personally. She was vice chancellor of UCC at the time. I was SRC president in KNUST, mm -hmm. and I had opportunity to meet her a couple of times. And you know, she represents what it really means to be a leader because she's one humble. She listens. She leads by example, which is very important, especially in an era where people make so many promises and are not able to fulfill them. Mm. Professor Jane Nano Pokemon German doesn't represent that. She has international experience. She's worked with UNESCO. She's studied abroad all around. She's an academic. She's pragmatic in her decisions. I believe that Ghana, after 67 years of independence, it's time for us to uh, put a woman on the ticket. Because globally, we've seen that women are better leaders than males. Globally, that's how it looks like. Women are better leaders. Even in our homes. Rosalind, I see your thing on your hand about dad and mom. Mm. But I also know that your heart is tilted towards mom, you know, because mom hasn't found <laughs> now. You know, but that, that, be, a, anyway. that, that aside, that aside. Okay. So I think that a woman on the presidential ticket is something we must experiment with. And we're not just experimenting because we do not trust it. We're doing it because we believe this is a, a dose for the betterment of society. Yo. Professor Jaina no Bukwajman, solid woman, solid credentials. Mm. Her integrity cannot be challenged in any way. A woman of integrity, she will lead by example. Okay, I, I think the NDC, you're really selling hair better this time around, I must say. No, I, I think that we were... No, no, I think, I think this see, time is better. Her contribution to the ticket in 2020 was solid. Was solid, Again, but this time this, the, 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 the publicity is much better than the last. No, but you see, we are also taking the bull by the horn. The bull yeah. by the horn because uh, in the last election, her contribution to the ticket was monumental. You look at where the NDC started in 2016, the defeat of the NDC in 2016. We lost by a certain number of votes. In 2020, you closed we, the gap. we closed the gap significantly. The seats we lost in Central Region, we captured over seven more seats in Central Region. Yeah. And that cannot be, uh, be, 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 be discounted. Professor so Jaina no to, to solid woman. We are hoping that for people that did not vote because of the abhorrence of the politics, come out this time, we have a female on the ticket. Mm. For those who thought that they could rely on the sweet promises of the MPP and that they are supposed one district, one factory, one village, one dam, one constituency, one million cities was something feasible. They have now seen that the MPP cannot be trusted. They have seen corruption fester in the affairs of this country. They have seen nepotism at its core. Okay. People have said that Baumia can never be exculpated of liability when it comes to corruption. And that is particularly so because Baumia's brother, it has, had been, it has now been uh, testified, Baumia's brother, blood brother, is a beneficiary of an $87 million road contract for which it was so sourced. Okay. So sourced, the competitive tendering process in our procurement laws were breached. Okay. Can we and the brother of Baumia, given it is something million dollar, uh, the dollar root contract, for him to benefit and fund the campaign of Baumia? Is that what happened? All right. Baumia that went to steal the rice of an importer. Okay. Can we go and into, share to Muslims in the month of Ramadan? Can we go into We're in the month of Ramadan uh, again. We're I in the fear, month of Ramadan. I worry okay. that Baumia repeat the same thing he did two or three years ago. I worry about that. Mr. Vice President Baumia, please. Don't go take anybody's rice at the Tamahabo and then go and share to innocent and suspecting Muslims. Don't do it again. We are tired of your lies. All right, let's go into uh, AFCON. I've been asking you, I even say AFCON. All African, All African games. games, yeah. Uh, it's, it, it had a grand opening on Friday and we saw videos and then we saw the rooms. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the newspapers are reporting how spectacular that was. I don't know if you witnessed it. Did you? Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, 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 I heard the reports about it. Uh, you see, I listened to the president speak that mm. day. The president said that this is going to be a very fantastic, well-organized uh, event and that all people who would have traveled out of mm -hmm. their countries to come to Ghana mm -hmm. would have a swell time. They would enjoy this uh, All-Africa Games. The president promised that it was going to be the best we have ever seen. And so when I heard the president say that, me these days, when Anadu speaks, I begin to laugh at everything he says. I begin to laugh because he's given us too many examples of what it means to be unserious, what it means to be untruthful. How? How? Because a lot of things that Anadu has said has not been manifested. Now he said it was going to be a spectacular 
ceremony. But it started off spectacular. How has it started spectacularly? How hasn't it when started When we are seeing that in the thick of affairs, there's doom so. I'm very happy that my big brother has just come here. The last time we had a debate here on the issue of doom so, he said there was no doom so in Ghana. You remember? He said the honorable, the honorable Ebenezer Mate, <laughs> former MP, said that there is no doom so in being Ghana. Fixed. That's what he said. And that it is being fixed. Of course, but he didn't say that. Uh, he said there is no doom so. He said that. Fixed. Specifically, what is being fixed? When all Africa games, you give us such international embarrassment. There was Togolese are here, South Africans are here, terms. Egyptians are here, Namibians are here, Congolese are here, uh, Sudanese are here, Rwandese are here. They are here to participate. And then we embarrass the country in this manner. We embarrass the Republic of Ghana. That you, you don't even have a power plant in a stadium. And there's doom so. Rosalind, do you, do you understand the scale of this embarrassment? There's no power plant because um, we are out of the doom so era. When they have... So oh, Rosalind, come on, Rosalind, Rosalind, Rosalind. But when, when you, I that's know, what the end I know as whole, sometimes you have to play the devil's advocate to get us to talk about the issues. But Rosalind, you see, this is a matter of national importance. National importance because for far too long, uh -huh. the Republic of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah's Ghana, Rawlings's Ghana, Atamil's Ghana, Mohammed's Ghana, has been disgraced by this MPP government. We have lost respect in the community of nations. Of course, Ghana. Of course. You didn't mention. Of course. John Ajim, Nanado has been a deviation. Nanado's Ghana. Nanado and Baumia have been a deviation of that patriotism and international <laughs> standard the Republic of Ghana has had. Today, you mentioned Ghana and we are a laughing stock in the international community. You promised, uh, uh, what, what, what do you call it, uh, Ghana beyond aid. And today you are saying because of aid, you cannot sign a law. Because of aid, you he, cannot sign a simple law. He said aid. that. No, that's not what he said. We said that, Rosalind, what did no, he say? He Rosalind, said, when, you, when you say no, this, you, you no, make, no, no, I'll Philemon. put you to strict Philemon. proof. Philemon. The finance put, ministry, put, put me to proof the finance ministry yes. came out to talk about mm -hmm. the international implications, the mm -hmm. financial implications mm -hmm. on the purse of Ghana yeah. if they went ahead to sign that. Yeah. And he spoke under the instructions of Nanado. Mm -hmm. Did you read Nanado's statements? But Nanado never said did that. Did you read Nanado's statements? Yes, I did read it. He didn't say that he was making this decision based on what the finance ministry said. He said two things in that statement. One was the implications on our economy. Mm -hmm. Number two was the fact that, uh, the second one was the fact that he had heard that there was a challenge mounted against the bill in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. That again was an instance of untruth. A day prior to the filing of the suit in court, Nanado told us that a suit had already been filed in court. Where did he get that information from? Because the suit was filed the next day at 1.50 something p.m. So again, Nanado lied to us. He did. That's a fact. If I'm not telling the truth, tell me it's not true. He lied that it had been filed. He said that he was topping, he wasn't going to sign because but the let's, bill let's in its form, he still had not the, bill the bill in its form, yes, the bill in its form had been challenged in the Supreme Court. He said that the day before, the bill was actually challenged in the Supreme Court. So on that basis, did Anado say that when in actual fact, there was no challenge in the Supreme Court? Anyway, let me and welcome... And I'm here to comment on the issue of the, the All-Africa Games. My comments on it hasn't come. You haven't finished. No, that one, I haven't finished. About, yeah. Especially the issue Let of me the welcome our Honorable Eminence Anate. You are looking so, so, so fantastic. Come on, Today, dear, we are twins, so we are twinning. I foresee that uh, <laughs> Bernard is not coming. So, <laughs> Bernard is stuck in the Yes. Yes. No, I, I, I pray to God <laughs> that... It should, the flights will delay him, <laughs> or he should miss his flights. So actually, we will get the opportunity. In fact, I brought my the elder, the, okay. the chief uh, fetish priest, so that we just do the, uh, the the ceremony for us. So by the time he comes, everything is. The ceremony will be done. Yes, so there's nothing he can do. The only thing he can do is to go to court. All right. <laughs> Anyway, you look nice, like I said. Uh, we are you. talking about the All African Games. Yeah. Uh, of course, it started on Friday. Uh, had a beautiful ceremony. Uh, the opening ceremony was nice, but um, there were a little bit of hitches here and there. We've a lot had, of hitches. We've had some of the athletes complain about they not receiving their, you know, their tools for the games. They are not. They haven't received. Some even say that the size of shoes that they've been given are not the correct sizes and all of that. Uh, one would have said that with the kind of money that we've pumped into it, you don't expect to see these hitches. Or even if you hear of the hitches, they should be more minimal than what we are hearing. And your take on it, Honorable. Thank you, Rosalind. Let me say good morning to our viewers and then good morning to my brother. I can see that he has really charged. 
and I understand because if we have been promised um, a deputy ministerial position, you need to let them know that yes, I'm capable of holding that position when the mandate is given. But let me assure him that um, next year, God willing, um, MPP will still be in power and he will still be my friend. And by that time, he will be officially be adored as my legal advisor. So he shouldn't waste uh, his time. Um, Rosalind, to be honest and sincere with you, truth is one. Mm. And sometimes, some of us, we say things just as it is. I will say that I'm very much disappointed. Mm. I must be honest with you. I, mean, I don't hide things. Mm. I'm very much disappointed. Very, very much disappointed. One, if we have built an ultramodern stadium, if we have renovated an ultramodern facility for this game, and the country that is hosting Atlas, or let me say, uh, those who are going to participate in activity are not getting what is expected of it. But I don't think that right thing has been done. I don't think that we can put the blame on government. Because what government needs to do, yeah. government have done it. In terms of resources releasing to the LOC and the Ministry of Youth and Sport that have oversight responsibility over the LOC, government has done his part. The last time, I think last week, um, Monday or so, I had an opportunity to meet the minister and I told him that personally, I think that we have not publicized the program yeah. enough. Yeah. And I think that there should be something. Mm -hmm. But honestly, the minister in his answer told me that, look, we have a local organizing committee. All these things have been given to the local organizing committee. And we have a journalist who is in charge of publicity. Who is the journalist? Dan Kweku Yeboa. Dan Kweku Yeboa, okay. So, we are expecting that since we are part of them, there should be a lot of publicity in the, in the, in the country. Like, look, this game is also to help the economic growth mm -hmm. yeah, but in, 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 in this country. Mm -hmm. Look, I attend school at Gimpa. So most of the times, I use the UGM hospital that hits the main yeah. road when, when I close very late. I was expecting that the outsider they have done the, um, a small market, it should have rather been the opposite side, mm -hmm. where a lot of people yeah. will be coming there to be selling their things and then it will help people. I told them, look, from Ebri, let's start from Ebri, straight to Rate Hospital Runabout. Mm -hmm. There should be both sides where we have street lights. There should be both, um, um, how do you call it, all the African countries' flags on it. Mm -hmm. Let's pick our principal street and brown it. Mm. But People, are the street lights working on that? It's not about the street lights. I'm talking about how we can brand the... How the, you can brand it without street, street lights? lights. We'll see. Oh, but if you are coming in the morning and you see, like... People come from Ebri, Mampon, and they'll be coming to work in Accra almost all the time. So if you are coming and then you see some of these things come, uh, uh, flags all world. over, definitely you will see that. Let me tell you, there are people who doesn't even know there's a game going on in this country. Oh, yes. I, I didn't even know until Friday when I saw the cast. And I was like, ah, it started already? In fact, the game even started before the opening. Ah. Some of the games even started before the opening. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. The way me, I like games, eh? So for me, I will not come and sit here and say, oh, because it's my government and therefore if something is wrong, I would come and say that it is no. To be honest and sincere with you, as a member of the MPP and as a member of the National Communication Committee, I will say that I am disappointed in the organizers of this program. Mm. I was so sad, especially on Friday, 
Was it Friday or Saturday? No, Friday. 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 In fact, on my, I was on my way to Kede for a funeral. So when I begin to see the, um, how do you call it, the social media with the, uh, the light of how the place is, the I was like, ah, what is really happening? Yeah. So I was thinking that it is um, one of these uh, Philemons and their people, <laughs> the way. So later I called a friend of mine who is also a member of parliament and I asked him, ah, what is happening? So the AC or honey, ah, but didn't you have a, 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 a stand by generator? He said, we have, ah, but why didn't you connect? All these things need to be checked. Yesterday I tried reaching the minister to let me know what exactly is the issue. Because if there's a standby generator in all the stadiums, mm -hmm. there should be a way of checking all these things before even the game starts. Because this bad diet that they have been doing, in fact, as I said, I've been using UGM. Since they started, for almost about two weeks before the games, any time I pass there, they have put on the, uh, how do you call it, the flood light. Mm. Meaning that they want to see to it that everything is working. Is working. I think that it is not too late. In as much that the embarrassment has been caused, I believe that the ministry and the local organizing committee, as a matter of agency, need to make sure that things are done in the right perspective. So that we will not look at what happened in Ivory Coast. Fine, they won. But I believe that it brought some euphoria to the people. I can say that if this thing is being well organized, the participating people, everybody gets involved. Flumo and his people will forget 2024. <laughs> but we are giving them the opportunity to come and talk. Mm. If this thing have done well, I can tell you, this morning Flumo coming here, you will definitely find something to... You'll be late. But now, he has got an opportunity. <laughs> but you see, another challenge is the tools for these athletes. What's going on? In fact, that is my surprise. My surprise in the sense that I got information a week ago that all the tools that they will use for this program is in. I'm really I'm surprised, I'm telling you. Because I asked myself, and I was told that all these tools are in. Mm. So if all things, all these tools are in, what prevents the athletes from receiving? I've seen a video circulating by uh, this uh, cycling people, mm. and they were complaining that hey, there's a cyclist who dropped out. That, that um, they are using their old bicycle, bicycle. Yeah. and they have been told that the new one has come, and they are being with. So at the end of the day, if you don't give it to them, when when you finish with the program, what are you going to use it for? Mm. Uh, let's, have... let's actually take a look, listen to what the cyclist said, and this is the cyclist. Let's make us say, you okay, mommy, because my prepare from last year, the time of Mr. Okamu, yes, on the Christina, from 2023. I also had a training, and I do, I'm not going to train, I'm not going to train, but I have to have a training. Now, what happened? Then the CNT, I went to and completed it, you know? Well, me start here, you know, my bike in April, me, me, me too. I want to my almost two races na na a blast here, just because me need better two. Me two part me do training, and one I'm using for competition. So he's using his own bicycle. He's using, and this is what he used for his training. Yes, yes. So if you have been using this for his training, it means that I mean the thing is getting old. Yeah, it's his own. Yeah. So um, I understand. That's why I'm saying that. I want to plead with the Minister for Youth and Sports, the Local Organizing Committee, the Sports Council. And sometimes when you talk to this person, oh, we, we, we are not involved. We'll get the, your information from... Um, it, how it, it looks like we like to shift the blame in Ghana. And that's a challenge. Because, you see, you spoke to the Minister. Minister says, oh, LOC. LOC will tell you, oh, I've given it to this individual. This individual will say, oh, I've given it to that individual. If one will take responsibility, as a Minister of Youth and Sports, you cannot tell us that LOC because you are responsible for it. And so no, hold LOC see, responsible. One thing, one thing that we also need to know is that this minister took over after the previous minister where all these things have been set already. We don't care. Understand. You are the minister. And we have a... The ministry have oversight responsibility. Mm. And that is where, honestly, I have a problem with the GFA and all these things when they come to sports. The government will put so much resources in sports mm -hmm. and they will be told that 
FIFA rule says that mm -hmm. um, government should not involve itself in affairs of, of the GFA. Meanwhile, when GFA needs money, it the comes to government. government. Why do you go out and go and look for their own money to rule, um, uh, uh, to, uh, how do you call it, control their own affairs? There's a young man who also actually, uh, he plays table tennis and he said that the boots he was given, he was size 42, he was given 36. <laughs> 42, and he, and he was, was given 36. 36. Oh, he was 47, sorry. Yeah, yeah. He was 47 and he was given 36. And then the nine super. Nice super. He was given size 36. Oh, I see. Yeah. But apart from that... Let's, let's see the video. That's him. How do you guys have not supported us? You, like... But I'm feeling it. We're on 16 men doubles. And I'm going to deliver for you guys. How do you guys have not supported us? You, like... We, <clears throat> even talk, talk the equipment that we got, the equipment that we got, didn't even come the, the times. We didn't, I've never, nobody has streamed the equipment. Nothing. The rackets, nothing. The racket I, 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 play, I used to play at tournaments. So I got to just the day. I've never tested it. The shoe, I was size 47. They gave me 36. How am I going to use it for? We don't see TT that we are coming for. We come to play our matches. We sat in our coach's vehicle and it was a pickup. So most of us, like eight players, were in the bucket. We didn't get any This is serious. This is serious. And if one person is speaking, it means that there are so many of them who are saying the same thing. Oh, yes. Or singing that, the same uh, thing. That's what I said. I heard that most of these uh, equipment that they are going to use are all in town a week before this game started. So if it has been released to them on time and everybody check his or her size, I think that we will not be um, um, encountering the problems that we encountered today. So... Um, let me say that I want to appeal to the minister and the local organizing committee as a matter of urgency to sit up. Mm. Because when you look at the, uh, the, the table and you see host nation where we are training in terms of uh, medals, medals bad. and you look at um, uh, Egypt, who as at yesterday, they have almost about 50 something. Mm. And we have four. Mm. But and the one is one person. No, it's two. Two, two people. Now one person yeah. has added all. So, and that is for the... But so one uh, person has uh, three. The, the uh, uh, weight lift. Weight lift. Yeah. And last one, let me say congratulations to my brother, Jerry Ahmed Shaib, who is the chairman for the weight lift um, um, organization in Ghana. And appeal to the minister, seriously. And I can tell you, there's no any party person who is happy about what is going on. Mm. I must be honest and sincere with you. There's the no attendance any party has person. been poor. I, I, I That's what, so the, the publicity, you see, What about the tickets? What about the ticket cost? Oh, the the ticket, the, yes, the ticket they are saying they have to buy it online. And I think I heard some people also complaining about the price of it. Yes. That look, <laughs> for instance, if I have to go and watch any of these games, apart from football, I will not have any interest in table tennis. I will not have interest in maybe uh, swimming and all those things because that's not my field. Mm -hmm. So if you are asking me to go and watch swimming, which I don't have much interest, and to pay 300 Ghana, I won't go. Mm -hmm. But if I have so much interest in football and you're asking me to pay 200 Ghana cities, I will go and watch it. So we have to look at some. But I heard a minister saying that in some of the games, it's going to be free. If it's going to be free, the most important thing is the publicity. Yeah. And sometimes I've always been telling people, look, Rosalind, in as much that everybody knows you to be a journalist, as for you, when you come on your set, the way she'll be bombarding you with questions and all those things, <laughs> there will be other opportunity given to you in the same cycle, but you might not be able to perform as expected of you because you have not been able to confirm yourself yeah. in that kind of... It has not mean because a person do sports. And he's a journalist, and he reports in sports. So when he gives you that opportunity, he will be able to say whatever he wanted to do. He can be able to organize it well. No, there are equally other people that you can bring them on board. Yesterday, I was starting with somebody who I, I know very well. In fact, he's a former member of parliament. When he comes to sports, and he has been at the sports council before, I was asked, "Ah, what is happening?" He said, "Oh, Ben, I'm not involved." I said, "Oh, hold on, I thought you are part of it." Because sometimes it is, yeah, yeah, so as they always say. I dream new Obaku for one team. Mm -hmm. If I feel that no one can help in this capacity, irrespective of the political affiliation, bring the person up because honestly, as I said, if this thing has been very successful, NDC have nothing to say. Mm. But since 
Yes, Friday. They have been doing speaking notes <laughs> on this. All the loopholes. They have got to And that's one thing that brings us together. The sports yeah. bring us yeah. together. So, some of us are moving to the ministry right this morning to also meet the minister. Yeah. You have some few and days let's to see go. So, how best we can able to redeem our image yeah. this last uh, two weeks. I think they will end on 28 or something. Right. We should be able to redeem the image of the country and then also. Uh, help the sports, uh, the athletes who are involving themselves into this. Please reduce the ticket cost. Oh, and, that's also very important. And, and try and yes. bus more secondary schools to go and watch it, so that it will bring the sportsmanship in people. Please. No, even you see, make it free. Make it free it, for the it, students. It's not everything that. Um, but you have been pushed. Look, what's the population of Lego uh, Presec? Yeah. Exactly. What's the population of um, exactly all weekend you could have uh, just bust them to that West Africa, place. Uh, uh, West Africa, go to UPSA, school. pick them, Legon Campus, pick them. So, in fact, in that Free enclave, in that enclave alone, Feel the place. you have a lot of schools around that place. And I'm saying that, look, how much would it cost to do a t shirt? Just fill the place. Let's assume, <laughs> even is that I'm told that the capacity for the stadium is 10,000. So, let's do a so t shirt. You, you, know, you know the thing. They are actually actually capturing where people are seated. But in actual fact, the place was half empty. Yes. So if you have 10,000 people, you go to Legon. Look. Three minutes, I'll be able to yes, finish please, it. Just... You see, I, I, All I, what you want to say, I've said it. <laughs> so let's move on. So I, I agree with uh, a lot of what the yeah. uh, Honorable Member has said. But in all of what he has said, he has sought to make it look like it is not the government's fault. But I want to accept there's not a problem of any local organizing committee or any subcommittee of... Uh, but it is right at the doorsteps of this government and the Minister of Sports, right at their doorsteps. We, the NDC, did our painstaking investigation led by the distinguished Samuel Okujita Blakwa, MP for North Tom. Is he now your um, NIB? Oh, he's, he's doing a very great job. Because it looks job. like he's more an investigative, no, I'm uh, tell you investigative that. You see, politician <laughs> than <laughs> You see, MPs also have a certain... <laughs> Oversight, watchdog rule, and please play that rule. So, whichever way you can uh, uh, exercise your watchdog rule over the government, whether and uh, you go undercover, you get sources, and all of that, you must do that. And Ablako has been, he's done that very excellently. So, he brought you always he give a misleading information. Uh, no, it's not misleading. Now, that's what I'm going to attack. He okay. made the point that 47 million has been earmarked by the Ministry of Sports as operations costs. 47 million, 47 million dollars. Ghana dollars. Dollars. Hey. $47 million. Dollars. Huh? Yes, $47 million. It's a matter of fact. And the Minister of uh, Sports sought to justify it. He was on Asempa, your sister station. You can get the tips. The minister was on Asempa FM. And he wanted to justify why $47 million. And one of the things he said was that the equipment they need for the execution of the sports, the various sporting exercises, were so expensive. He gave a list of how much all of these equipment cost, justifying why they were going to use $47 million, which is even separate from the $119 million they claim to have spent on infrastructure. You see, so far, the Ministry of Sports is not giving us good faith. They are not giving us reason to trust them. Put this issue aside. They claim to have spent $17 million, $17 million on accommodation. Is it out of the $47 million? Aside that... $47 million on accommodation. So, 47 what, mi wait, 47 no, million is on what? Equipment? 47 million as operations costs. Operations. And but operations, at, accommodation is part of operations. No. It? In his attempt to justify how much he spent on this, he said it included equipment. Okay. It included per diem. It included allowances. He justified it on Asempa. And I'm saying that you can get the tip from Asempa. You get the point. Get the tip from Asempa. Okay. Aside that, they claim they have spent 17 million mm -hmm. on accommodation on a sports village. Now, what did they do with that 17 million? University of Ghana, they claim they have installed ACs in the diaspora. You know the diaspora, the mm -hmm. part of University of Ghana they call diaspora. Liman, uh, mm -hmm. Jean, Akan mm -hmm. Nelson, Elizabeth, those four buildings. They have put ACs and put wardrobes. And that is what costs 17 million dollars. And renovation. How do you expect the people of Ghana? To even believe they are doing something. You see, the people of Ghana have become so, we've heard so much of corruption in this government that whatever they are doing, we don't even want to be part of it. That's the only reason why people don't, are not even attending. Really? Is people not... don't attend because we're just tired of this government and the corruption. 
It's even thinking. If it, you think even it's if it's tangent. Three people want ammonia. To... The corruption is like ammonia. But if it's when you go or... close to any program organized by this party, you will smell in pungent corruption. Really? That's why. But people were, um, what's the... Uh, Put that aside. Year, wait, year of return, people really participated in... Year of return thing. is because there's enjoyment. We go and have fun. But this is enjoyment. This is what's enjoyment about this one. <laughs> that you have spent a year of return. Do they use government money to do year of return? Ah. Did they use $47 million to do year of return? Did they use $119 million to do year of return? Did they use $17 million to do year of return? They did not. This one, diasporans in America and other parts of the world are coming to Ghana to enjoy themselves, and we all mix with them as our African brothers and sisters and enjoy, and government wants to take credit. Government can't take credit for that. But for this one, we are tired of the corruption. That's why people don't want to attend. But put that aside. Dan Kweku Yebwa, the head of uh, the, committee. The, the Committee for Communications or whatever of the LOC, also was interviewed. And he says that they have outsourced the responsibilities of organizing this to globally reputed sporting agencies. Globally reputed sporting agencies. So they come and tell us they've done very well, but yet nothing is happening. I'm so disgusted. To crown it all, it is what Nanado himself said. What is it? The president himself at the opening ceremony said that this is going to be the best ever organized in the history of sports That was the expectation. We all thought it was going to be so. The best ever. Yes, you we see, all thought so. People must stop embarrassing the president. In fact, the president himself should stop embarrassing himself. So how? But because, we all... Uh, see, no, no, wait. You see, Philemon, I also thought that... I also thought that it was going to be the best ever. I think that as, as a citizen, you are expecting the best. You don't expect the worst. But unfortunately, there will be people who mar your expectation. And this is what has happened. Okay, so... We all have an uh, expectation of the best to happen. Mm -hmm. But you see, when a president speaks, most often than not, it is policy and must be executed. So that I can say. So we cannot have a president that comes out to make categorical statements and then his lieutenants cause this embarrassment. It is because the president himself is not able to exercise authority and control over his lieutenants that things go bad. Because if I should say A, I must ensure that whoever is supposed to make sure that A happens, makes it happen. But if the president comes out to make a categorical statement, even asserting that Ghana's organization of this port would be way better than what happened in Ivory Coast. And yet, it is this embarrassment we are facing. It shows the president cannot exercise control over his subordinates. We have set a time without number that the government is bloated. If you're a president and you have over 100 and something ministers, at his age, what control can he exercise over our ministers? What control can the president exercise over his ministers? Why do we embarrass Ghana like that? Anyway, um, Ghana got uh, an extension of his Shabi family. I don't know where this came from, but anyway, I, I think it was it was a needless comment. I must say, yes, uh, you want to. Then um, I, I want to move on to the next yeah, topic. So just a minute. That, um, if the minister says that we have been given. $47 million as operational cost. For my information, the buying of the equipment, equipment. is part of the $48 million, $47 million. million. I said yeah. that, I said that, yes. The renovation of the Games Village mm. is part of it. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I met the minister and was given a breakdown of these uh, $47 million and what they are supposed to do as the host nation, the question that I ask myself is so what are we going to get in return? Because all the athletes that are coming, the officials that are coming, is the host nation that bear the cost yeah. of their, yeah, their feeding, feeding everything. accommodation, and everything. Transportation. And you know, these hoteliers and other things, people will take advantage of it. Yeah. In as much that they take maybe $200 a night somewhere, with this game, you don't tell you it's going to take 300 or 400. You have no choice than to what? Pay for it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that is what is happening, but I'm just giving an example. But that's why they have a village for them. So they can't go to the hotel. I, 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 I asked about the games village, and I was told that there's an agreement between UGM yeah. and that of, um, how do you call it, the sports yeah. um, ministry of the release of land at Bot because where they are built, it belongs to Legon. Okay. That, that place used to call Legon Farms. Okay. So 
Then, when we give you this, this is what you're also going to do for us in the return. So I was even asking the minister, so when you finish the game, will you go for the air conditioning, the bed? That, even one but I'm told that, oh, then all these things have to go back to um, Legon. And then they are going to have oversight responsibility over it. And it's going to raise some income for the school as well. It's not just that place. They built one around, um, what's that place called? Behind Trasaco. I've forgotten the name of that place. That's the bottom. That's, That's the bottom. That's the bottom. Okay. That's the bottom. So, I mean, a lot of things is being done. So, if you come, Philemon, come and sit here and say that we have been giving forty-seven million dollars and you are doing this, and they, I mean, check your facts. That's why. I, but nobody that's why, the hotel, though. That's, why, know, I that's, that's why. I, what I've said after, that's why I'm saying that. That's why I'm facts. saying that. Sometimes Okudia to try to mislead you <laughs> by giving you information <laughs> that Okudia you know has saved this right. country millions so, of dollars. We millions. have the right. To question the minister, 47 million for operation, million dollars for operation. Give us a breakdown. He did on our sempa, and that's what I was. When talking. he gives the breakdown, we will know exactly what the money is has been used for. 47 million. We have used 17 million here. We yeah, have done this year. We have done this year. In fact, is that, is that not even scandalous? I use 17 million. 17 million no, to renovate. A building. No, 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 oh. hey. no, no, no. The seventy million is not for renovation because this That's was a man, they built, village matter. They built, they no, built, no, no, no. they built you, the you, village. You need. You there there need are places. Check. There are places that were renovated, like the Legon Castle. The Castelli. four buildings. Yes. No, yeah. no, no. That's four. renovation. That's all. Yes. Yes. But the Botiman, they built it from. Oh. Yes. They, they built what in Botiman? They built. They built some buildings in Botiman. What they built in Botiman yeah. are sporting facilities, uh -huh. which cost one hundred and nineteen million dollars, separate from the forty-seven. So the Botteman housing that... 109, there's no, no housing. How could the Botteman house, house no, 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 no. Oh, That's a different matter. But they renovated it. No, 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 no. It's, no, no, it's no, a different no. place. It's not part. It's another place that they have built also. Okay, yeah. Yes, and then, Lake and then Only the Lake Gong. to a stair. Yeah. So those different ones buckets, are the 47 with different million dollars. And then the stadium itself, with the Botteman and uh, uh, Cape Coast, where they are doing other things, that was about 100 or something. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying, that you need to check your facts right. If we are saying we have 47 million, we have used 17 million for renovation at Legon. What went into it? How many rooms are we but talking they, about? They've told oh, us. We know that. They have said that already. They said they used 17 million. 17 million for, um, to put ACs the and then put in wardrobes. That's what they said. No, but it's he more cannot than come. We, re we heard no, what he that. We he heard what anyway, he said. Let's go on. Let's move on. Let's move on. So we have to go there. Wardrobes and ACs for 17 million dollars. And then second, wardrobes. He talks about. He talks about. That the president have sat down and then the president promised that this is going to be the best. Look, you and I also, our wish is that this game become one of the best in this country. Since we are the, we have, this is the first time of we hosting it. I have given a responsibility to Rosalyn. I have given you all what you are supposed to get to make this thing very successful. So if your leaders have made the thing not the way I am expecting. You blame me for that. But where is the money for advertisements? Not for that one, unless I give you the minister's number. Because I was, the deputy expecting, minister's I was number. expecting... That is, why, that is why I'm saying I that I am disappointed. Yes. In the sense that, I, from the show, I said it. Yes, I am disappointed. I was expecting and, them to and, get and, in and looking at houses. looking at the person that I'm being told is handling publicity, I'm expecting so much. Because these are people, you see, sometimes, is this how it is, oh? You media people, you sit, you, because you have the opportunity, you be castigating against everybody. But when opportunity is given to you, no matter what you I am not Dan Kukuyebo. No, I'm not talking about that. Nah, but <laughs> I, I am sitting the blame on Dan Kukuyebo. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking I'm, about that. No, no, I'm talking is, about, is, I'm, talking about I'm talking about media in general. Okay. That when you get opportunity. Sam, Sam. Sam, oh. Sam. Okay, when you get your turn, it's Sam. Sam. Okay. But I ha have you given me the opportunity that I failed? So you can't... You okay, can't Rosalind okay. is not near failure. Uh -huh. Rosalind is an excellent okay. executor. The last time you went to um, Metro Mass, uh -huh. somebody called me and they said, oh, today your girlfriend did well. I said, oh, who, which of them? Because I have a lot <laughs> of girlfriends. <laughs> and so the one... Did that day we, we even yes. came for yes. the program here. They said, oh, the one who was host... I said, oh, that is Bernard's girlfriend. Me, I'm just parasited. <laughs> and so she did the MC very well. Uh -huh. I didn't even know you were even going to moderate the program. Right. And you didn't even tell your producer you're going to moderate them. My producer knew. So you knew when you came, you, you make an account to her. 
account as in what? As what transpired there. What transpired as in what? As how you host, you, you moderate the program. But I, I, I did my work. Okay. I didn't work in the capacity of uh, multimedia. Yeah, I, uh, privately? Yes. And you did so well? Yes. Yes. So you see, when you were given the opportunity... I did very well. You did well. Yes. So we are best, we'll be expected so from other colleagues of yours as well, who, let's pre assume that when you went to the program, you couldn't do it well. People will cascade against you. Mm. Or originally come and sit on this and you will say, government have done this, you have done, just MC can want to me and yet. Mm. So that's how people are saying it. Honestly, I have an, I'm on a lot of platforms. And when people hear that, oh, we are not discussing that, let me say this. Yeah. Because but when you that the way and manner he projects sports, yeah. the way and manner he does things in this country, people are expecting that, oh, so far as he is in charge. But maybe you go in, he also tell you a different side of the story. So that's why I am making a passionate appeal to the minister and his deputy and a local organizing committee that, look, they cannot disgrace us as a country. Well, uh, this and many more. I hope you've sent in your messages to us with regards to the All-African Games that's still ongoing. And uh, there are different stadiums that they are taking place at. And so if you want to be a part of it, please and please again, I think there's a website that you can get your ticket on. And there are some places that are free of charge. Um, go and watch it, okay? Let's support our own. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say this, yeah, 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 whether you like it or not. And so if you're free and you don't have much doing, much on your table, please and please again make way. There's the Lego uh, Stadium. Uh, just go there and enjoy what you are doing there. So many activities going on. Let's talk please, about, please, you know, one, the, one small this year, 2024. One small information. Yes, please. It is that this morning, as I was driving here, I heard uh, on your morning show, Joy, the Super Morning Show, they spoke about the fact that the minister claims that they spent money buying 120-something vehicles. Oh, there are so many cars in town. You have seen the cars. No, but this the is cars. the point. So they claim they have spent 120, they've bought 120-something vehicles, but then our athletes were put in a bucket of bucket. a pickup. Yes, you didn't hear the guy. Oh, yeah, I saw, I saw some of them. Yeah, they were put true. in the bucket yeah, of yeah, a pickup. That's so true. Bucket of a pickup. Your athletes, they want them to go and get medals for you. Oh, no, not I, I actually saw, I actually you saw, saw... You even saw it with your eyes. Hmm. It's disappointing. No, but I, I felt... I, I, let's, let's Rosie, say, I'm, I'm let not going to say okay, anything about it, it anyway. We are tired of them. Um, they tired. still have some more days to fix the issues. And so we are hoping that the issues will be fixed. Let's move on to uh, economy. Uh, factories that we build, uh, schools that we build, our hotels that we build. As a country, as a government... What are our sustainability plans? Because it looks like successive governments always fail to continue what the other government started. Every government comes with its own policy and ends up abandoning the other government's own that they started. Why is this so? Is this a finance thing? Is this supposed to be a policy thing? Or there's something that we can do about it to fix it? Well. We'll take example, an example, you know, we see the Bonsata factory, we see the Wenchi Tomato factory, we've seen so many, Abuso glass factory, all these factories have been abandoned. You know, one government comes in and says, oh, I'll start it, and the next government comes in and abandons it. Or should we say, we will actually give a government probably like 10, 15 years to see a completion before we bring another government in, or we should actually have a law on sustainability plans. Well, um, I have to ask this first question to Philemon. You landed this one, so let me ask uh, you, Honorable. Honorable, what is the challenge that successive governments face that they cannot complete or, or, or um, you know, sustain industries that have been started under other governments? What is the challenge? Rosalind, the major problem we have in this country is what have you done as a government? That's a major problem. Mm. You have been in office for six years. You have been in office for 10 years. What have you, what done? Have you done? So to also impress the people, let me also go and do something. Let me give you one example. In my constituency, as a member of parliament, I'm giving health fund 
health fund is given by the NHI is related to only health issue. It range, it can be given maybe 30,000, 20,000, 50,000. It depends on the formula that they are going to use. Mm -hmm. I am told, not that I'm told, I'm, I'm reliably informed my predecessor, Tufilo Sitachai, the regional secretary for the NDC, mm -hmm. decided that his first term is going to start, is going to do some clinic in one of the community in the constituency. He started it his second term that he abandoned the project. In fact, he built up to roofing level. The second term for four years, he abandoned the project. What was the reason? Finance? I can tell. When I took office as a member of parliament, going around to inspect some of the projects, and you see, as MPs, you're not like uh, the main government. Why they will say they, will, they are preparing a transition? Mm -hmm. When you leave, you leave. you leave. You don't account to anybody. Yeah. You don't write any report to anybody. I don't need to write that since I came, I was doing this, mm -hmm. this, and this, and this, mm -hmm. and I'll go and give it to the, the next person. It's not done. But I took it upon myself. Went to all the projects I've seen that during his term was going on. Some roads, some drains. I went to look at it. I tried reaching him to let me know what is the source? But you know, we are doing politics. I went further and I was, I investigated and know where he was getting his source for the clinic. I went there and I was told, oh, it is his health fund that he was using. Mm -hmm. When I decided that, look, I don't care whether it, this thing started under him because the money that he started using it for the project, that doesn't belong to him. It's a taxpayer's money. Mm -hmm. So if that be the case, and it's a government project, so far as it's health insurance, it's a government project, let me also go and continue, continue with it. I demolish from the window level because it is weak. As I'm speaking with you, before leaving office, I have completed it. There's 45 beds, 45 beds in that clinic at Tankasalai. Go and look at it now. Left. Abandoned. Left. I said there's 45 beds in it. It has been left. Wow. The place, I wore it through somebody that I went to appeal to. It's about almost about 10 acres of land. This man came with wallets. We have gated it. Now people have broken the gates. They have turned that place. People are... Selling. What else are there? Uh, go and look at the place. I can give you pictures when I took office, hmm. when I completed it, and the state of it today. And what is the reason? That, that, that is why I said that everybody wants to do something. Look, the last time we came and we were talking about this factory, when I went home, hmm. I had opportunity to take one, one of them, one after the other, and I said to myself that if previous governments will be building on the foundation already been laid by a successor, I believe that this country will not be where we are today. Mm. I'm telling you. On Friday when I was going to Kidi, Saturday when we were returning, and we had a problem at Amasaman. So I was engaging the, those who are doing the roads. And they were saying that this is a 10 lane. The Amasama road is a 10 lane. And the third or the fourth phase, they want to raise enough resources so that they will link the overpass to the mm -hmm. Sumu one. Because for where they have gotten to, they are almost at in Sawam. So definitely they can able to add it to them soon. There's somebody in my car. And she said, Honorable, this is sad to hear. If we don't complete this work and the unforeseen happen, that means that will be the end of the road. Why should it be so? Is it the individual? I want to I want to actually look at it from the individual basis because we've seen, you know, some government complete projects that other governments started. Yes. You know. Like 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 the MPP government. <laughs> the year block. 
We have completed most of them. Because it is not John Muhammad's man, in as much it was his vision that let's have secondary schools in rural areas. And now let me tell you, most of these schools, they decided to do it a day school. Who completed the N1? Oh, let me finish. <laughs> Is that just a question? I, I have a question. Oh, uh, I just have a question. I'm, I'm giving you projects. I'm giving you, I'll give you projects. But I asked a simple question. Why you not ask me? No, you interjected me. <laughs> All right, continue. Most of these schools that they started building, mm. in a typical village, where it will take you almost about three hours to get to the school. So meaning that from your home to your school, by the time you get to the school, you are tired. So when teachers are teaching, you will be sleeping. Mm. Now, most of these schools, we have built dormitories in the school and have turned it to a boarding facility. That's what we are supposed to do. That's as you ask. The N1 was started by J.U. Kufo. Atamus came and then he completed with it. So it's individual thing, right? Yes, it's individual. But as much as it is individual, sometimes we as citizens also let them understand that it is not your money. Just as uh, Baumia said, if you said you have done this, you have done this, you have done this, it is not your money. Yeah. It is the people's money. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why that if there's a project going on somewhere and another government have taken over, you will say that, oh, because, and it's because of the same politics that we are doing. Mm. Oh, it is this, we started, we started, we started. Is it your money? Mm -hmm. Let, let, let and me, that is the problem. That's the issue. Let me ask Philemon this. You know, with what Honorable is saying, it looks like some people have this whole political ideology of, you know, trying as much as possible to have their own. How do we work on this? Uh, you know, to shift this whole ideology into people understanding that this is for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. But currently it is not so. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I agree with you. You see, it's a canker that we need to depart from. And uh, it's important for us to continue uh, the projects of successive governments. And if you realize that NDC has time without number uh, made attempts at this, you'd remember that uh, we, we are talking about Baltimore, Baltimore, Baltimore. There's this Nate estate in Baltimore. There's another one in Community 25, both of which were initiated by President Kufo. It took the government of John Mahama to complete them. In 2014, 13, 14, 15 to 16, we completed these buildings. And today, a lot of people are living in them. The NDC did that. There's also the example of um, uh, the N1 that you have mentioned. The NDC completed all of these ones. So it's important for governments to continuously be able to... How do we change the ideology? We should change because it because the ideology of, if no, I come, see, I, have to, I have to also leave no, my no, own no. mark and the all point of that. Is this, the point is this. I think you must make a bold commitment of your intention to do that. And that is why John Mahama has, has publicly, before the chief imam, John Mahama has promised that in the next NDC government, he will continue what we started. That when there is an abandoned government project, the NDC will complete it, including projects initiated by the MPP government. John Mahama has been categorical about that. I haven't heard Baumia say anything like this. See you. I haven't seen them continue projects initiated by the NDC. Oh, but they have. Which one? Some of the e-blocks have been completed. Oh. There's the example of the Comenda Sugar Factory, which has been left unattended for seven years. Had we paid attention to the Comenda Sugar Factory and continued from where the NDC stopped, I believe that would have been producing sugar locally in Ghana. You get the point? Mm -hmm. there, there's also the example of Saglemi. Mm. They have come with several untenable reasons why they cannot complete Saglemi. But if Saglemi had been completed, just like the NDC completed the affordable housing projects by, by Kofor in Baltimore, would have had accommodation for thousands. But, but, but thousands. Not, we, we know that we the live in an era, is currently in court, and so it's not like the it, Zaglami has it been It being in court does not right? terminate the ownership of the project. The matter is in court over what? It's not about the ownership. The ownership of the, of the project is not contested. It's uncontested. It belongs to the government of Ghana. So should the government but of it's Ghana... it's been privatized. No, it's, it belongs to the government of Ghana. No, the government was So if the government of Ghana has spent $200 million in putting up such a massive, monumental edifice to support accommodation in Ghana, to the, the housing deficit, we already know. Already, mm. a university student finishes school and cannot even pay rent. That is a problem, and we must think about that. So I wish the government of the MPP would have uh, 
follow the steps of the NDC. Where there's an abandoned project, invest money in completing it. Invest money in it. And I'm saying this particularly in the back of the fact that the MPP promised industrialization. And today, if you want to check their record on industrialization, it's one of the most pathetic in the history of How? this country. Pathetic because look at the, the budget they have voted for the so-called industrialization. They said they were going to do one district, one factory. As we speak, that project is not well, it's not, it's not well implemented. But they still have some. You see, we are, today we are discussing, we are discussing the issue. Built, right? We, we, we see, we've heard. Uh, it's not, it actually, is not, it's let not me correct. use that word, head. We've, we've heard. heard of, be, uh, over 100 <laughs> factories. We have heard, that, but we have not seen. Maybe you we have heard. Maybe but my viewers have seen. seen. Roslyn, Dear viewers, seen. if you have Roslyn, seen... Roslyn, when we are counting journalists in this country, journalists where they are sought in this country, Roslyn's name will be mentioned. Please. Rosalind, uh, as one of the top have, journalists in this country, we have, have you seen? We have, uh, we've been... Rosalind, okay, as one of the top journalists, comments. have you seen? Let me read some comments. Good morning. Good, 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 empty good, empty good morning to you. The use of vigilante groups in the election process heads to the democratic process. It undermines trust in the system, violates human rights and threatens the rule of law. Measures must be taken to prevent the influence of vigilante groups in elections to ensure a free, fair and transparent electoral process. Aaron Bebako Kokomisa. Thank you so much, Aaron. Okay. And this is coming from Philip Abochi. Philip says, good morning to the Ghanaian 67th. Yes, down the lane, uh, what did we gain as Ghanaians? Health facilities are crying for bed syndromes, poor road networks and poor potable water in some regions. And institutions do not have resources to work with, especially GES, uh, NHIA and GHS. Nanado Baumien of Oriata used 48 billion for the Cathedral Foundation only. Hmm. Mm -hmm. The next government will jail them. Number two, the myopic behavior of NPP people is getting out of hand. We are in the 21st century, yet one political party is poisoning their fellow human beings. There's a bad attitude in the party. I want to advise Baumia that he should not eat with anybody again. Honorable John Kuma's death is very painful. I bought you Philip from Kita. But uh, uh, Philip, the, well, the wife says he wasn't poisoned, so. No, I said that's, that we should challenge that story. Uh, challenge. Rented press. This is what the wife oh. is saying. MPP now, you, we they do. said she's going to speak on, uh, as I said this morning. And I'm yeah, saying yeah. that's very insensitive. Yeah. Hey, she we do. We are bringing us as talk about what? Oh, what is your... She says she will talk. Uh, we, 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 we are, we are waiting to hear her. Talk. We are waiting to so, hear um, her. Let's have your, your... Let's hear from you this morning, uh, sending your messages to us. Uh, let me ask this. You spoke about budgets. My pen has even fallen. Anyway, you spoke about budgets. Honorable, uh, do we have challenges with our budgets? Is it budgetary, uh, you know, constraints? For long-term, you know, projects that is also causing this. Because somebody will say that yes, we started this, uh, the budget wasn't enough, and so when the other government came, they had to abandon it and look at other projects. Yes, most of our projects that we have are budget constrained, but I believe that priority is very is also very important. If we have twenty factories, and that, uh, let me say, in Kuma, and Nkuma have left 20 factories. Maybe 10 of them has been broken down. We have a priority. Which of these factories, the way we revamp it, we put much resources in, can generate a lot of revenue for the country mm. to do the others? Okay, let's do the tomato factory. Let's do the soup factory. Let's do this. I mean, the ones that people will consume that will get a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. Let's say that, oh, within my four years in office, I'm going to revamp two of this factory, budget towards it, get a loan facility purposely for it, mm -hmm. which at the end of the day, the company or the factory will pay it by itself. Because if today we have, um, um, let me say, revamp the tomato factory, and you are producing a lot of tin tomatoes and other things, like by now, I can say for a fact, if we have not even paid and even built an additional one or expanded, we have done a lot of things in that place. But because, as I said, we all want to do something. Oh, during my turn of office, I did this. During my turn of this, I did that. And because people like me and Fimoni will come and sit down and say that, oh, the Joy Prime uh, building started during my time. Give me credit for it. You, since you keep, you have not done anything. I'll be forced 
that instead of me to complete with this project, let me also go and start Adom FM. Mm. So that I also said when I came into office, then this. By the time you come back and say, let me go and touch Joy, Joy Prime, the amount of money you will spend to complete it, three, four years ago, you will spend more than that because the kind of issues that have happened to the building or that infrastructure, you spend so much on it. Mm. And that is a problem that we have. That is why, in the wisdom of the vice president, when he was giving his speech, he said that, look, it has gotten to a point that we have to have a development plan, team up with M uh, uh, national, uh, uh, how do you call them, the Professor Balfour Committee, uh, that's uh, planning committee. Mm. We need to go alongside with it, like a blueprint. So whoever comes into office, this is where you, we are you going. have to. And we don't need to go back. Mm. So if we are building Agenda 111, and at the time, maybe MPP leaves office, we have built 80 out of it, left with 21. When you come, don't say, I'm going to also do build a district office anywhere. Mm -hmm. Go and complete with it. So the people in that village where the 111 has been built and has not been completed, they also benefit from it. Right. But because of the political mischief, we always try to do something mm -hmm. to place. And just as we have set examples, we have set example about N1. Today, if you are from Tema and you are going to Kaswa mm -hmm. or you are going to Cape Coast, if Cape Coast Road is being completed, then if you are from Tema, straight to Cape Coast, you have your, uh, your, your peace of mind because this road is, is going to be good. Mm -hmm. Because from the motorway, you hit the uh, uh, N1, straight to Malam, straight to Kaswa, yeah. you have your peace of mind. If Atamos have abandoned it, it will not be in that state mm -hmm. now. So we no need to be thinking about, let me go and do this, let me go and do that. That is why I'm saying that, look, in the wisdom of the president, he said, look, I want to do free education. When you give me the mandate, when the mandate was given to him, and he started, and we realized that the number is being increased, and there are deficits in when it comes to accommodation and classrooms. So look, my predecessor started he block. Mm -hmm. He promised 200. By the time he was leaving office, he had done only 25. That don't mean I have to abandon. For the sake of the children. He had completed. But he had started more than 25. It was it's true. Now you have been a spokesperson person for... No, oh. but it's a fact. Let's yeah. speak to fact. More than 25 had been built, but you, 25 you, had you, been completed. You, but let's you, continue. Do you know the Bote man? That's Philomi was saying that it was completed by JM. That's not a fact. You oh, know. Oh, oh, how? How? I'll come to that. Oh, come on. Please make your point. So, they have completed 25. Mm -hmm. And some are, they use some word. Even, even, it's, it's, it's even on the foundation level. But they say it's near completion. But the foundation level. But most of these schools today, as I'm speaking with you, almost about 30 plus of them has been completed. And some in addition, dormitories have been built to enable them. Me, honestly, I, I, I'm a Presbyterian. We are in length. And this today to, from today up to the end of next, two, uh, next first week in January, I'm a Muslim. We are starting fasting today. Yeah. We are in Ramadan. Mm. That's why I don't want to talk plenty. And I'll get hungry. <laughs> the ones that have been started by John Mahama and completed by Nanado. The first time I saw one of the schools, honestly, I've not been to any of them, apart from only one. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was even going to a funeral at a tomb. President Mills, may you so rest in peace hometown from the main road to where the school is built it will take you more than in fact from the main road to the place it took me almost about three hours to get to bad road 
It's not only about Bar Road. It is not only about that. The distance is also very important. Mm. So if you go and build at the place there's no light, access road is bad. Distance. Who will send his or her child to that school? Oh, but this Today, time, as I'm speaking with you. This time, me, I was in Accra and I attended school in Takrade. And you work from Accra to Takrade. Ah, but why should I work? I'll go there. Exactly. In but they also. So work. I am telling you that where the school is, it's a community day school. Uh -huh. It is a community boarding school. Community day school. Okay. So there, it's a day school instead of boarding facility. So there are no villages around. Ah. Rosalind. I'm asking a question. I don't live there. Okay. I am telling you that from where, from the main junction, from the main road that you branch to the school, took me only three hours before I got there. So I'm imagining the students or the villagers that have their kids that will be attending school there. And what is the population of that place? How many people will even send their children to that school? But today, because it has turned to be a, a boarding school, now when GES is doing placement, they'll be placing people in that school. You have yeah. no choice yeah. than to go. Yeah. And this is done under the president, Nanado Dangwa Kufwa. Let me ask Philemon. Yes. Philemon, you know, you've, your, your party or your leader has said that countless times that when he comes to power, he review free SHS. And this has been the fear of many, thinking that it will be one of the policies that will be abandoned like we've seen some governments do. Um, how are you going to defend this? Will you people abandon it and bring your own free SHS? You, you, you're also sort of progressive. No, it's just a constitutional thing. that education should be progressively free. That's what the constitution says. Okay. But I see John Mahama on the 16th of September, 2023, he was speaking at, let me read it, he was speaking at the NDC Greater Accra Regional Zongo Koko Stakeholders Forum. Mm -hmm. At that particular meeting, the venerable, distinguished, eminent chief imam, national chief, was there. And President Mahama made a categorical pledge that when the people of Ghana give us their mandate to lead this country, the NDC government under John Mahama and under Professor Jainan Opokwa Jemain, will ensure that all projects initiated by previous governments are implemented and completed. On the specific issue of free SHS, we have never been opposed to free SHS. We are saying that the very, you see, he made a point about the- said you e, review. I'll get back to it. He made a point about e-blocks mm. and said that we had gone to site e-blocks in, he calls it bushes, villages, somewhere. What he doesn't remember is that when you look at the concept of equity, the national cake to be distributed equitably. It means that people, even in hard to reach areas, mm -hmm. deserve amenities. It doesn't mean that because someone comes from some village that's far cut from the rest of Ghana, they cannot get education. That's why we cited schools in hard to reach areas that children of those cocoa farmers, mm -hmm. children of those cattle rarers, children of those onion farmers will also get schools to attend. That is the reasoning behind that. You see, look at the example of UDS. When President Rawlings gave the seed fund for the establishment of UDS, people said that, now Tamale cry, why will anybody take his child to school in Tamale? Those are the concerns people were raising. And the Tamale is too far away for a university to be cited there. People thought that the only universities people can attend is KNUST or... I think Ebenezer's point was am, the fact that it was a day school. That, that's the point I'm making. We are talking about sustainability. And when you look at the comprehensive project of the NDC, it was beyond just putting up only a school building. It also had to do with providing the uh, accompanying amenities, roads, amenities, roads, and other associated amenities that the school will need. Mm. Who in his right thinking will just go and put up a building without roads? No. But they had the opportunity to come and continue. What have they done about that? They haven't. Mm. You get the point. But let me, let me make a point. Yes, please, Today we are, making the, we, are, we are discussing sustainability. Mm. How sustainable is a plan if you do not have roots? How sustainable is your attempt at utilizing the national cake if you claim to have even invested in buildings where there are no roots? So the NDC did something, the MPP came and did not continue it. But let me just end by saying this. On the specific issue of Saglame, on the specific issue of Saglame, it is this MPP government that has reneged in ensuring that this project is, they have come to want to privatize it. Ask them, who are the said people they want to privatize Saglame to? And then lift the veil of those corporations. And let's see the owners of those companies. Anyway. Lift the veil. 
Let's see those who own the companies they want to privatize Aglame too. I'll, I'll ask about privatization The NDC has never well. sought to privatize Aglame. Ours is that we're a mass party. We believe that people must be taken care of. And that's what we built. When it. I said they were privatized, so your younger brother, who are they were challenging me. No, that was not us. MPP did that. No, I said they, they are attempting. <laughs> they haven't even that's done that. That's what I said. They I are said, attempting to do yes. that. And we are kicking against it. Okay. Because we built it for the common man that a university student who finishes school gets a decent place to sleep. That a teacher trainee that finishes training college gets a place to sleep. A nursing student, someone becomes a nurse and whose salary has not been paid and has not been employed by this government, gets a place he can lie, lay his head. Okay, uh, we, we have a message coming paid, in. So how do, how we, ha do we have a right. message coming in, and this is from uh, Honorable Timothy. I want to he says, Good morning. Hey, Rosalind, uh, you have grown grass. Publi uh, publicity is, is that not the same Dan Kwekuye Boa who attacked JDM, so he's been compensated for vilification and vile attack on JDM. Hmm. Uh, my love for Honorable Eben and my younger brother. What publicity again do Ghanaians need when we have performance tracker, digitalization and Ghana? Let us be a little circumspect and moderate on our critique. Honorable Timothy says so. And he continues to say, Honorable Ebenezer has been really truthful and honest this morning. I admire him. We have now shown cased, uh, we have now showcased our doomsaw to international community. When Ghanaians tell you give them doomsaw timetable, you NDC is making noise. Now the doomsaw at the games, what will you say? Uh, just like when we were cautioning them about the borrowing, we, we were told they were better managers of the economy and we were incompetent today. What do we have? A junk economy and crude haircut of investments and pensioners. Ghana has become a laughing and mocking country internationally. If Ghanaians will speak and you will listen you want to listen, the international community will expose you. And he also continues saying that uh, the uncompleted projects, he says. Check this. JDM completed War Hospital and President Nanado went to commission it. Mm -hmm. He didn't acknowledge JDM. Check Terminal 3, that is Kwame Nkrumah, uh, oh, sorry, Kotoka International Airport, sorry, KIA. It has not been commissioned, yet tax-free shops have been shared among daughters, friends, and family uh, this morning. Okay. Hmm. All so right. This morning, you see? Timothy decided to write his <laughs> and send it to you. Tell him that if he's still watching. He's watching. He, for the past two years, he has not called for a meeting. So he should call for a meeting <laughs> and stop sending, uh, which um, meeting? how do you call it? Which, which meeting? Former MPs meeting. <laughs> he, he call meeting and stop <laughs> writing thesis. Timothy, call for a meeting and stop uh, writing thesis. Let me thesis. see if we have some, some comments that have also come in. But Honorable, how do we create a sustainability plan? Should we put a law there, uh, or we should actually let government stay on for a longer period. Is it that the ATS is too short? Yeah, let me just make this you, one, you one for you. It's when it comes to sustainability plans. Yeah. We have the National Development Planning Com yeah. Com Commission. Mm. And you, you, may, you must have heard about Vision 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rollings, yeah, yeah. And up to, uh, since then, and then uh, I'm, I'm not sure what exactly. So I think we should tie ourselves to a plan. There should mm. be a plan. But, you see, but that's why we are the, committed to the that. The problem yeah. we is have. To that. Mm -hmm. The problem we have is the manifestos that the parties always bring. And we forget the NDPC uh, projects. Because M NDPC is a development planning commission. How we are planning the country. How are we going to do it? Even if we are coming out with your manifesto, mm -hmm. I believe that it should be in conformity with NDPC plan. So whatever you want to do, if M M M NDPC is saying that, build 50 schools within five years or six years, mm -hmm. it should be in your manifesto that I'm budgeting for 20 schools within my first four years. If God willing and my mandate is being renewed, I'm going to build an additional maybe 10. I will not be able to build all the 50 as well because NDPC have sat down and I realized, look, we have a deficit when it comes to education, when it comes to infrastructure in our schools. And within the five years or six years to come, our population will be increasing. And if our population increase, then it means that when you are taking your world to Addisada College, if they have a population of a thousand now, it is only meant for thousand in 2024. So if next year the number increases, it means that there's a need for us to get an additional facility there. So within five years, secondary school population is going to be increased by maybe 30%. With this 
Let's say to all the schools that we have, all the secondary schools that we have in this country, let's try to make sure that, look, at least we built one mm. dormitory, one 18 or 25 unit classroom block in any of the secondary schools. By so doing, we are working towards the NDPC's plan. Right. We have no hospitals in some of the villages. Mm -hmm. We need to build 40 hospitals. hospitals. Yeah. This fort, let's share equally in the regions. So if you are sharing it equally in the region, and every region is, at least is getting five, mm -hmm. we cannot do all the five, mm -hmm. but rather, let's do one. Mm. So meaning that you're going to have one in each of the region, make it 16 in my first four years. Mm -hmm. Then we comes to, um, how do you call it? Road network. Let's do 50,000 kilometers of road. Let's share, I was just telling someone, look, when it comes to my constituency, and you give me five kilometers of road, it can capture a lot of places mm -hmm. because the distances are very short. But when you go to Philemon's hometown, that he hardly goes there. Oh, no, that is not correct. No, 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 no. That, <laughs> that must Philemon be stated on the record. Chief it must be stated on the record. You see, I am here, I am, I'm here representing my people. I was home. If you really remember, I was home even ah, recently. You went with her. Oh, no, no, but she remembers I was home. I go home. I go home quite, okay, quite you, often. I go home. I go to my constituency if, quite often. If you give the same... He's a future MPO. You can't do can If you give the same five kilometers to Philemon to take it to his village, mm. that he'll be going this weekend to... Mm -hmm. It can only do to some extent. So when you look at the principle of equity, the people of my constituency need more roots. That is so why invest money there. That is why. That is why me. That is why me. Honest, honestly, I'm always against mm -hmm. the formula that we use to share common fund mm -hmm. and other government. Um, how do you call it? Um, Freebies. Uh, uh, resources. Yeah. Because, for for example, you come to my constituency. Give me 10 kilometers, and I can tell you, it can cover about three, four electoral areas mm -hmm, in my constituency. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The same cannot be applied in, um, Garou. Uh, 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 how do you call it? Garou, Timpone, or maybe mm -hmm. uh, uh, any of the northern, this, or even Ashanti region, mm -hmm. or maybe eastern region. Yeah. Because some people, la uh, landscape are very vast. Yeah. Yeah. And they create the, con uh, the constituency based on two things, mm -hmm. population and landscape. Mm -hmm. Some people have the landscape, they don't have the population. Yeah. For instance, I have the population, I don't have the landscape. landscape. Mm -hmm. Because we are talking about almost about 400,000... Your place is choked. ...in my constituency. Mm -hmm. When you it comes to registered voters... There's houses on the roads. <laughs> no, 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 that one there. <laughs> when it comes to the voter population in my constituency, we are heading about 160,000. Yeah. That's about four or five constituencies in Eastern region, in Vata region, in Lovely region. Mm -hmm. But when you are giving resources in terms of common fund, the same thing is being given to the MP that have a landscape, the same thing is being given to the MP that have, um, how do you call it, the population. Mm. How do we marry these two? Mm. Anyway. So it is something that we need to look at it. So for me, I think that we need to ensure, or maybe the N NDPC, how to let the uh, political parties be aware mm -hmm. that if you are coming out with your manifesto, go alongside with the National Development Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. Because this is a commission being established not today. They have been there for so long. They have been paid. And they do a lot of planning. They do a lot of research. They will do a lot of engagement at the expense of the taxpayer. And then they finish. And their, their document is being put on the shed. And the political parties come with their own manifesto. You know, um, I was talking about privatization. I think we have some comments. Let me read this. Greetings to Joy Prime. Let me comment, Rosalind, this morning that you haven't sounded too political today. Oh, no. I, don't, I don't sound political every day. <laughs> Your questions and contributions are in place. Anyway, the country needs Ghana manifesto and not parties manifesto. We'll continue to talk and talk every day unless we stop doing politics in everything we do. Nana, I'm going to swear, Drew. Nana, thank you so much for sending in your message. Uh, let me go on Facebook. I think we have some comments coming in on Facebook as well. Let me see what we have here. Okay. Uh, what's the Facebook, Seth? Hey, this thing is complicated. Can you imagine? If you are not educated in this, how do you do it? Eh? Where's the Facebook, Seth? Where's the Facebook app? I'm trying to get the Facebook up. Um, I'm not seeing it here. It's not popping up anywhere here. Okay, let me try and go on my Facebook on phone. I think I have some comments on phone with the Facebook. 
So I'll quickly take it and then um, we'll continue with that. Okay, so this is what what I have here as coming. Um, but, you know, I was asking this whole thing of privatization. It looks like whenever government feels the funding is not enough, we quickly privatize. You know, when our budgets, we run out of budgets, we privatize. I'm looking at a beautiful hotel, La Palma Royal Beach Hotel. I mean, hearing that it's been privatized hurt my feelings. I look at the golden tulip. <laughs> hearing that not, it's... not just privatized, but sold to a member of this party. You let's talk about the privatization. But to a member of this party, they've sold it to themselves. Yeah, but I still want to talk about the privatization. Yes, we will. But we cannot talk about sold it to who? Oh, we did privatization of They have sold. sold it to an individual, uh, uh, but that's uh, but it. Privatization I don't know about it. Yeah, so, basically. I don't know about so, it. Yes, so that's what's happening. For me, it's not the individual, but it's the fact that we have government institutions that we could have owned and create more employment. However, what we are doing is we are rather selling it True. to private companies. So let me use two examples. Oh, may I? Yes, please Yeah, let me use two ahead. examples. You see, use the issue, the, the example of uh, Tema Oil Refinery mm -hmm. and how for the past uh, years of this government, they've run it down. Tor is like practically dead. And then they go and bring some people in this government, complicit, they go and bring their business partners to come and set up a private Ooh. refinery. Who, who bought to come and say, oh, they, uh, Santo, Santo, Santo oh, okay. oil refinery. Mm. Do you know when that uh, you see, started? Oh, yeah, I mean, it's this government. And uh, oh. if bring to anything contrary you have. But you see, the thing about this one is that they have even gone ahead to now hijack the haulage of fuel, the business of the haulage of fuel. What honorable, the contrast honorable used to get to haul fuel from Accra to Bali or somewhere in the north. Do you know, you I, get it again. Do you, do you know I have a contract to haul it? No, that, that's a hypothetical situation I'm uh -huh. making. So you won't get that again because the Chinese company has now taken that responsibility. Kwame A plus and who used to benefit from that contract no longer can benefit from it. So now because they have given it to a Chinese, Chinese company. Are you sure privatized the ref yes, Santo Oil. Are, are you sure? Knows, are you this. sure? I don't it, it's Chinese, yes, but there are also Ghanaian elements okay. who are in this government. All right, let me read some. And the example also, I was okay. going to make the other Please example. Go ahead, uh, so I was making the example of and also Saglemi. As of 2016, that we're leaving office, Saglemi was like 98% complete. 98? Yes. Electric ah, like the Light oh, I I have you been there? No, if you pass, I don't mean that. No, no, but let it me, could have been 98%. 98%. Listen, listen, 98%. Oh, Rosalind, let me make my point. No, but 98%. Hey, 98%. Electrical cables were done. Water connection was done. <laughs> the, uh, the, didn't you see the documentary they did? The, the kitchen fittings were all done. So what this government had to do was just to complete the remaining small percentage of it to finish it up. But for seven years, you have sat unconsent and let Saglemi what, what, die. Okay. What was How is what, this sustainable? What, what was All right. So the me, plan is that they sit down and let the thing go, uh, get get. I sports. think we, we, need, we, need a, we need to pass uh, probably a bill or something in parliament where every successive government will have to continue whatever the previous government started. And also we need to have another bill on privatization on government industries because it's becoming too much like i said the, these two companies actually did hurt my feelings yes. when i heard it had been privatized they have sold Golden it to themselves Tulip. how it's how? been turned into lancaster mm -hmm. la palm royal beach how, how? Anyway, some comments coming in. Aaron Beba Kokomisa says, Good morning to you. The oh, use yeah. of vigilante groups. I think I read this already. Thank you, Aaron, for always sending your messages. We are super grateful. Uh, Philip Abochi says, uh, Good morning to the Guardians. Uh, 67th year down the line. Okay, I read this one as well. Philip, thank you so much. You, we are super grateful. Jonathan says, Good morning, Rosalind. Who is complaining about low attendance? at the ongoing games. If you get up in the morning and you don't even know what to eat, how do you expect one to go and sit under the scorching sun to cheer athletes? Oh, Charlie. Hmm. Uh, John Dramani Mahama Beba says, think, uh, think about good vote and vote for John Dramani Mahama. What is 24-hour economy all about? Okay. Hey, you have explained, though. Uh, the 24-hour economy will be a deliberate policy intervention by the next NDC Mahama government to encourage and support certain businesses and companies to operate 24 247, preferably in a three-shift system uh, of eight hours each by creating an enabling environment that promotes productivity, competitiveness, and well-paying jobs. Notes. JDM used only three and a half years to develop Ghana building schools, hospitals, 
Roads Airport Harbour, Commander Sugar Factory, Atuabo Gas, etc. Remember to vote wisely. Thank you. Hamza Mohammed says, Alaji Hamza Pig Farm. Good morning, Roslyn. I sometimes wonder why we are doing this to ourselves as a nation. What kind of legacy are we leaving behind for our future leaders? We were told Ghana was going to use this Africa Games to sell itself to the world, uh, to the whole world, only to end up selling Doomsaw to the world. This is so shameful to say the least. Is a fact that when you fail to plan, you've planned to Shame. fail. This is all about leadership failure. Roslyn, I'm current, currently reaching to you from Tamale. We don't have light. We don't have water. It's so sad. The ECG boss should be fair to us and provide us with a doomsaw timetable for us to plan our lives and stop playing politics with us. The MPP always feels they know it all but they know nothing at the future of this country and that this wicked, super incompetent government is pregnant and hopeless. Never again. NPP, Alaji Hamza, Pick Farm. This timetable, eh? Mm. I don't know. I, I've experienced them, so and I understand where mm. this is. Please, give us a timetable. That's all we had. Last week, I pleaded with a timetable. Please, give us timetable. Give us timetable. You, you, you feel if you give it to us, it's doomed, so. It is doomed, so. We understand. Give it to us. We need so, <laughs> okay, we beg you. So that my food will not get spoiled. No, no, That's I all I ask. So. How do you arrive at Baum, yeah, doom so. is a doom so? Oh, no, if you give me 12 hours uh, light off every three days. Every it's what, three days? Every three days. is what? I don't understand. So I get it today. They won't give me uh, the next three days. They give me again another, another 12 hours. And it's exactly 12 hours. So. Where do you live? <laughs> I'll tell you. I live at Lakeside Estate. I'll find out. Oh, yeah. You should. Oh, everywhere in Accra. No anyway, uh, Richard Kobana, Akafomeni, Asi, Ku says, <laughs> the Minister of Sports is a joke. For seven million on a wall. So what at all is happening in this country? NPP system of government governors is the worst of all and they must go this December. I'm Zeldris from Cape Coast. Sami Boache Asamankese says, Ghana is 67 year and when you compare and contrast to NPP and NDC, everybody can testify that NPP 60 years in governance were exceptional or are exceptional. Dr. Baumia, in collaboration with the private sector, will train at least 1 million youth in IT skills, including software developers, to provide project, uh, job opportunities worldwide. Let's continue to support NPP to break the aid and to fulfill the vision of Dr. Baumia and to protect the free SHS. Regards to Honorable Charles Achampong, the MP for Asamankese, and Honorable Frank Asiedu Bekoy, uh, aka Protozwa, the next MP for Sukum. All right, so these are the comments that we've received today uh, on Facebook. Let me see if I have some more comments. Hey, comments have come. Hmm. Okay, let's let's let us let us read just these ones. Okay. Um this one says, Good morning, madam. Please tell the MPP man to tell us what killed John Kuma as a party. We are uh, as a party, are they interested of investigation into this matter? Ghanaians are watching them closely. So as far as this case is concerned, uh Kluche Jacob, Afwanga Catholic Hospital. Hey, somebody says they... I'm not a doc medical doctor, <laughs> so I can't know what. But if I've also been told what killed Atamos, I will know what. I will find out what killed John Kuma. Good morning. There's a project at Tobacco Co Processing Company. The storage started by Dr. Kwame Kuma. May his soul rest in peace. Has been left for years, and this can really help Ghana. Uh, Ghana is bad for Ghana. Okay, can help Ghana. Okay, the abandon of the project is bad for Ghana. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, this one says that, good morning, um, sorry, what's happening? Please tell the NPP communicator to check Kaswa of Falco Secondary School and look at the development there just because of school after he will stop making those baseless arguments. One day, the Kosombo Dam will be sold by these NPP government for a fish pond. <laughs> The privatization we need to look at, though. Please, my name is Suleiman Abdul Fatal, MPP government. Why your government did not pay NAPCO trainee? I think that NAPCO trainee... Their, salary, their allowances have not been paid in uh, areas of over 12 months. <laughs> hey, so the Swami interchange, not even a block has been laid. Hey, Nanado, you lied to us, eh? Ousu uh, from Kumasi. Um... Sami Boachi as a man Ghana is 67th and we compare. Okay, I've read, read this one already. Thank you so much, Sami Boachi. 
Um, Alasa and Sese from Zenu Central, a lot of those schools were given buses to carry these students to the school. But when the Legon was built, was it built in the middle of Accra? Okay. All right. Oh, hey, so the messages actually came late. Have you seen the messages? So many of them. So many of them, but unfortunately, it came too late, so I can't read them. A big thank you to my guests uh, for coming in today. Please, uh, my viewers, do send your messages a bit early for us so that we can be able to read all the messages. I have, so I have more than 15 messages, but I can't read any of them. So thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here. Philomon La, thank you so much. We should go to the stadium to actually support. Oh. Let's go support. Hmm. Honorable Ebenezer Nati. Good citizen you have. Let's go we, support. We want to, right. but the economy doesn't support us to go. The economy, we are nothing well, in our pocket. Well, 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 Anyway, that has, that has been it for News Flash segment. Coming up next is what's trending. Do stay in